So at the University of Michigan, we have this very applied version of calculus. And what applied means is on the page, students are reading these practical applications of all kinds of things, half-lives, um, the periodicity of planets, and there's, there's some level of engagement that goes with that because you can see we're not just solving for x, we're not just taking an integral. Um, and this basically takes that to the next level by bringing real life applications into real life. Um, so we go to the Natural History Museum, the Arboretum, and there's some real hands-on interaction there. So U of M is already taking something to the next level, and then this is one beyond that, right? So traditionally, we're looking at mechanics. We're looking at computations without a context. Um, at U of M, there's an emphasis on bringing some context to there. And now this is sort of context out in the universe. Um, but I'd like to say there's, it's a three-part innovation. So that's the most concrete piece. But I think that there's also a philosophical shift happening here because I work with um, underrepresented students at the U, and conventional wisdom is that what you want to do to help students do things like succeed on exams is to pare down the curriculum. And what we're doing is the opposite. We're actually building it up, so that's a philosophical shift, and it actually has um, been very effective even in helping with these sort of exams and things like that, ostensibly. So I think that there was a piece in me and a piece that came from the students. The piece in me, to be super honest, was I felt as if I was starting to get not so much bored, but maybe complacent in what I was doing. And I felt almost a little bit jealous of people doing, my colleagues doing things in the RC, in the honors program. And I was like, I've been sort of trained that we don't do that in my program. But then I thought, why don't we do that in my program? So that was the piece. And then I think from the students, um, a lot of them are going through these summer bridge programs. So it's almost a two year cycle without any breaks. Um, so a lot of this is you kind of bear down and it's a little bit painful, but then something you'll have beautiful opportunities later on. Um, but I wanted them too, these underrepresented students, to experience this kind of like fun, inspiring piece of being at a university too. So as it turned out, the exams and these things went fine and maybe even better than they had been going before. But when I entered into it, I thought, okay, every day spent on a project is a day spent not reviewing exams. Certainly teaching them about how half-life actually works. This isn't something, you know, radiometric dating. This isn't something that they're ever going to see on a test. So here I am spending all this time doing things that are outside the curriculum. And I thought maybe there's going to be a cost there and maybe it's going to be a big cost. And what am I risking? You know, if these students have scholarships that are dependent on their GPAs, what am I risking by taking this leap? Whatever you lose in the sense of sort of another review problem or another this or another that, you gain in that students are so much more engaged, not just on the day of the project, but it almost feels like all the time, right? After we do stuff like that, they ask why all the time and how is this used? And so I'm getting like an improved level of motivation from the students that may be compensating, right? We have this idea that these things are working in competition, and I found that there's maybe some level of symbiosis. There have been two surprises. The first is that students are doing at least as well on this very sort of like, you know, these standardized exams and so forth. These And actually, I believe they're doing better, although many factors are entering into that, so there hasn't been like a controlled experiment. Because at the same time I was doing this, I was doing other things as well. Um, so that's surprise number one. Um, surprise number two, maybe it wasn't fully a surprise. I guess, you know, some students I expected to go to the museum and get excited because that's their personality. But I've also had students who, you know, I had one student I remember in particular, he was kind of sleepy in class. And what was really going on for him is he was frustrated. And so you kind of shut down. He wasn't tired because I'm not like, la la in the classroom, but just because it's hard and he didn't want to deal. We go to the, to the art museum, we do this project. He's a good artist. And suddenly he's like all excited. And then maybe that even is not so surprising, but then he comes back to class and he's better after that. The nice thing about these projects is they're discreet. So you can start small if you're feeling a little tentative and do one. And what I try to do is I've been adding one piece each year. So there are more and more projects or more sophisticated projects. So we, we talked about collaboration. I wasn't on a faculty team, but I do want to sort of thank some people. Um, first is my colleagues, while they weren't doing this with me, were incredibly supportive of this. And I think their excitement really helped me get over the hump of um, 
little bit of nervousness or apprehension about doing this. And then my students for like being little kids and being so into it instead of being like, we're too cool to like be excited about the Dinosaur Museum. So that's why I want to just thank folks. Yeah.